Um, okay, so it's recording. So yeah, I just wanted to welcome everybody back. I hope everybody had a nice holiday. And uh, yeah, welcome back to the committee. And I'm looking forward to working with everybody this year. We have some new members joining us. Um, so Caitlin just jumped in as well, so welcome. Um, Hi, thanks. I think maybe what we'll do to, um, for the new members that are joining today, if we could just do a little bit of a round table to introduce ourselves. So I'll start with Dean's in my top uh, left-hand corner and you can kick it off. Well, uh, nice to have some new members. Uh, Caitlin, welcome. I see we're gonna have Alexander and uh, Alicia and uh, we have a new uh, council representative uh, in, uh, in Matt Shoemaker. I'm looking forward to, uh, it sounds like a really good group and I'm, I'm happy for those that reapplied and got reappointed in past committees. So uh, welcome to the Municipal Heritage Committee. Go ahead, Mark. Hi, my name is Mark Jones. I'm the library manager at Algoma U. This is my second year on the committee. Jamie? Um, yeah, I'm a retired librarian, um, happily retired. I think this is my third term, isn't it, Dean? Third or fourth? Pop, pop, pop. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I have a passion for local history and I love, um, I love the work in this committee is just so interesting and I feel embarrassed because I think I'm on every subcommittee and I'm, you know, I think that might be too much, <laughs> but I enjoy the work, so I'm having fun. Patricia? And that's how we keep busy when we retire. Uh, I, hello, I am Patricia Lovestrong. Uh, I am a ministry rep, so I'm a resource person for this committee. I am with the Ministry of Heritage, Sports, Tourism, and Culture Industries. I got it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure to uh, support this committee as much as I can. Uh, Alicia? Hi guys, I know you can't see me right now, but um, I'm just playing with my video camera here, but I hope to fix that. Um, it's my first time on the committee. Um, I have a, a bit of a history in the field of heritage and history. Um, it, we're going to Oklahoma University and doing my background in history. And I'm currently um, with Athabasca University working on finishing my master's degree in heritage management and social history. Um, I've been in the dental administrative field for a really long time, but I decided I need to get back to my roots and pursue my goal of eventually getting into the field um, in a career sense. And I'm really excited to be here with you guys today, even though I seem to be having some Zoom difficulties, uh, of course, but um, I'm glad to be here and uh, see what it's all about. Harvey. I put my video back on, so it's made up good, but at least now the new members can uh, get a little uh, pot shot at me. Uh, Harvey Robbins, I've uh, been on the committee. I guess I'm the old man on the committee. I've uh, been on the committee for about 12 years, I believe, and I'm retired from Sioux College. Caitlin? Hi, sorry. Um, my name is Caitlin Kazmarowski. Uh, I'm new to this committee. I'm also pretty new to the Sioux. My family and I moved here from the West Coast uh, two and a half years ago. Um, I'm an urban planner by profession and actually served as the staff liaison for the Heritage Committee in my last position in Port Moody, which is a municipality outside of um, Vancouver. And uh, since we moved here, I had a baby about a month after we moved it's been very crazy and we have another child so uh, I haven't really been pursuing my planning career as much as I'd like to but I have started my own business on um, the last few months and just really wanted to get involved with the city now that kids are older and things are kind of more in a routine um, also just happened to um, recently we're purchasing the uh, I guess it's I can't remember what the name of the house is. It's the site on um, McGregor, 143 McGregor. We're going to be moving into that house in about a month, which is wow. super exciting. <laughs> so I just, I love heritage. I've worked for consulting uh, firms in Vancouver a little bit on contract, and I'm just excited to, to be able to participate. Thanks. Great, thanks. Alexandra, you have good timing. We're just doing a little bit of a round table. So do you want to take a couple seconds to introduce yourself? 
Awesome. Hi, guys. Uh, yeah, my name's Alexander, and people call me Alex. Um, I'm at school right now, so it's Mr. White. I'm a teacher here at Boreal School for the Algoma District School Board. I, I came back during the pandemic, um, and I'm, it was a really good excuse to move home and reconnect with the community, so I'm trying to do that in many different ways. Um, I've just got a natural keen interest for uh, local preservation and history. Uh, we've got such great history in Sault Ste. Marie, coming from the West where you don't see as much. So I'm just happy to be on board and, and contributing and whatever insights I can offer as well. Uh, Sean. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sean Medes. I'm, um, I guess from Jamie's generation of, of uh, additions to the committee, I, I can't remember if it's three or four terms, but um, uh, I am a, uh, lecturer in Community Economic and Social Development at Algoma University um, and the Director of Nordic Institute, which is a research group affiliated with Algoma U. Um, I'm also on the Cultural Vitality Committee. Um, so that's uh, um, you know, part of my, my interest um, you know, is that connection between culture and heritage. Um, and I, I guess that's about it. Nice to see everyone and welcome to all the new members as well. And Krista. Hi all. Uh, so I'm Krista. I'm here as a resource person. I'm a researcher and curator at the Shinwalk Residential School Center, which is housed at Algoma University. It's nice to meet everyone. Okay, and Sam. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm Sam. I work with Verge over in the Community Services Department with the city, and I take the minutes for the Municipal Heritage Committee meetings. Well, thanks. Welcome, everybody. And I'm going to kick off the first part of the meeting. Um, the next item up on the agenda is the election of officers. Um, so the first, I need somebody to move and second, resolve that the nominations be open for the position of chair of the Municipal Heritage Committee for 2021. Uh, Mark? I'll second. And Sean? Uh, so one of the things we have to do because we're um, doing these online, I have to do a roll call whether you're for or against uh, each of the resolutions. So, um, Councillor um, Councillor Shoemaker had sent his regrets. He had another meeting. Uh, Dean, four. Uh, Mark, four. four. Uh, Caitlin, four. four. Uh, Sean was seconded it. Harvey? Four. Jamie? Four. Uh, Alex? Four. And Alicia? Four. Okay, so the next I do three calls for nominations. Is there any nominations for the position of chair? I'd like to nominate Dean Greenwood. Okay, uh, so Sean's that. nominated Dean. I'll second that. <laughs> Are there any other nominations? And any other nominations? So seeing none, Dean, do you accept? I accept. Thank you. Okay, so that was moved by Dean, or sorry, moved by Sean and seconded by Mark. I think it was um, the other way around, Virginia. It was moved by Mark and seconded by Sean. No, I think it was moved by Sean. Oh, okay, sorry. He got in ahead of me, I was going to move it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the motion is resolved that the nominations be closed and that Dean Greenwood is nominated for the position of vice chair, or sorry, chair for the Municipal Heritage Committee for 2021. And uh, Dean, you accepted, so I'm assuming you're four. Yes, four. Um, Mark seconded. Uh, Caitlin? Four. Sean moved. Harvey? Four. Jamie? Four. Alex? Uh, sorry, four. And Alicia? Four. So all in favor then is raise your hand and carried. Okay. Um, now we're going to open up um, the nominations to be open for the position of vice chair for the Municipal Heritage Committee for 2021. Is there anybody to move in second? I'd move uh, to nominate Jamie Van Haffen. 
Okay. And I will second that. Okay, are there any other nominations? And any other nominations? So Jamie, do you accept? Yes, I do, thank you. Okay. And so Sean and Dean. Okay, so the next resolution is resolved that nominations be closed and that Jamie Van Haften is nominated for the position of Vice Chair of the Municipal Heritage Committee for 2021. Um, so Dean seconded, Mark? Four. Uh, Caitlin? Four. <laughs> uh, Sean moved, Harvey? Four, <coughs> excuse me, four. Uh, Jamie, you accepted, so, oh. Four. Uh, Alex? Four. And Alicia? Four. Okay, so all in favor? <laughs> Raise your hands. Perfect, so that's carried. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Dean for the remainder of the meeting. Okay, thank you, Virginia. And uh, thanks everyone for uh, attending our Zoom meeting and congratulations to our new members. Uh, it sounds like we've got some uh, great resource uh, people involved. Uh, Wonderful to have you on board. It's quite rewarding, uh, as Jamie says. It's it's fun uh, walking around our community and recognizing our heritage that we have in this area. We're blessed. Anyway, item number three on our agenda is the approval of minutes. Uh, now, basically, uh, uh, the only ones who can vote on this or or uh, move the motion to approve are uh, anyone who had been at the last meeting. So uh, basically, keep that in mind. Uh, Everyone had a chance to look at the minutes. Uh, any questions or comments on those minutes? Yeah, Dean, uh, in under item four, um, would you uh, ask the uh, secretary to uh, correct my name, please? I second it oh. by H. Robin, uh, should be uh, an S. Oh, yeah, we okay. can worry about that, Harvey. No All right, <laughs> any other corrections or comments? Okay, may I have a mover for those minutes, please? Mark? Uh, I'll also move. And Harvey. And then Virginia, you have the current list. Uh, could, could you read out uh, the list Absolutely. for the um, Dean? Four. Mark? Oh, he moved, sorry. Caitlin? Four. Sean? Four. Harvey seconded. Jamie? Four. Uh, Alex? I don't believe I was here the last meeting. Oh, that's right. Thanks. Yeah, yeah thank you. Good point. Got them all already. Perfect. Okay, and all in favor? Okay. All right, moving on to item number four on our agenda Declaration of Pecuniary Interests. Anyone have a conflict of interest to declare? There are none noted. So we'll move right to number five, business arising. Uh, and we have one item under that. Uh, and of course, it's going to be Virginia letting us know about Heritage Week. So um, <laughs> this year is going to be a little bit challenging. Um, normally for the new committee members in the past, we've created a dis um, display for them all. Uh, so I don't anticipate we're going to be able to do that. Um, Jamie's going to get into uh, some of the heritage calendar later on, but we are, we do have a proclamation that's going to council. It goes to council on Monday, February 8th, because that's the closest to heritage week. Uh, the next uh, council meeting would be after heritage week is over. Uh, so it'll be going then. Uh, the, the theme, I think I had the theme in here was, sorry. In your package, I uh, included the proclamation that will appear at Council. This year's theme is resiliency, relying um, on our heritage foundations to hold strong and help us pivot in a changing present for the well-being of our future generations. So, yeah, so we're trying to figure out what to do. We'll ha probably have a press release, uh, maybe direct people to some of the different heritage resources uh, that we have right now. So there's a number of tours that um, are done through on this spot. 
uh, as well as the interactive map that's on the city's website. So I think it may just be a press release this year sharing um, some opportunities for uh, people in our community to be engaged and learn a little bit more about our history. Thank you, Virginia. Anyone have uh, anything else you'd like, like to add on that? Okay. Uh, moving on with our agenda, item number six. Has there been any uh, designation applications? Uh, we did, oh, sorry. We did receive uh, a designation application, uh, but it still needed additional information to be included, so it was fairly uh, light. Um, so I'm going to be working with um, the machine shop. They've put in a request to have the yard locker designated. So we'll be bringing that back to the next meeting um, with a, but a, more information included in the package uh, so that the committee can look at, you know, more of the history. Virginia, okay. can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Is, does that person, the owner of the uh, machine shop, do they own the pulp tower? No. No, they don't? Okay, because that not that the one that was declared that was in the top 10 list of endangered? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it is. So, but they're not the current owners. The current owners are okay. not in town. So. Um, oh, okay. And has anybody, yeah. did anybody communicate with the current owners about the pulp tower? to inform them that they're endangered? Um, yes, so oh, okay. they're, they're aware. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, I, I think we're the intent, or I think what Tony's hoping is to have some of the other buildings on the site that uh, he does own um, right. designated. So you'll see, I've just got to add a little bit more history around it so that the committee has a full application to look at. So okay. we'll be working on that over the next couple of weeks. I received it last week and I didn't have enough time to get all the detail and okay. included for the committee's consideration. If, if the library were open, I'd offer to help, but since they're not, I won't. <laughs> There's a fair amount of information in past designation reports. So um, okay. with the um, research that was done on the site when the office building was designated in the machine shop, some of that can be pulled and added over. Um, it's just, uh, we need to include a bit more for uh, the committee's consideration. Okay. okay. Well, thank you for that, Virginia. Uh, any other comments or questions? Okay. Uh, item number seven, our designated heritage property grant program. I guess, uh, Virginia, you're still on the stool. <laughs> yep, we uh, don't have one in right now, but there will be um, an application that's coming. You can see that there's a request from uh, Kensington Terrace there. They've gotten some quotes. Uh, they had a hard time getting quotes, but you'll see uh, for the request for the work for the windows. So they're looking at putting an application. They're just in the middle of pulling that together uh, for the committee. Just a question, are they planning to replace them with uh, wood windows in the same configuration and so on, or do you know the details? Yeah, so the, if further in the package, um, you'll see the information on the, the they included the one quote. Um, they have the other ones that they're gonna be sending me. I included the designation report for the site, as well as um, last night I emailed out some photos that I had received yesterday evening um, and sent those out to committee members so that they could actually see the photos of the windows that were being done with more detail. Okay, any other questions? So basically, Virginia, that application is not ready for us to uh, have a motion to support. We're still no, working but, on it. Yeah, but it's coming. Um, so under new business, um, we can go into more detail and Mr. Park, uh, Kim Park will be available for a call if we have questions for him as we get to that point in the agenda. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, item number eight, our uh, outstanding items, our subcommittee reports. And uh, the first one is Heritage Calendar. Jamie's been uh, doing a, a tremendous job. The photos are fabulous. Wow. Uh, what's happening now, Jamie? All the <laughs> Yeah, this, it looks good until you actually try to use those pictures in a print document. So the um, the fellow from Superior Printing that's doing the calendar 
has really stug struggled with the quality of the pictures that I provided. And, you know, he was finding that some of them were thumbnails and, uh, you know, I was pulling them off the internet. And so anyway, we, um, I think there's only two pictures right now that we're, that we're still trying to get. Um, Matt, um, the fellow that Will Hollingshead at the museum would, provided me with three pictures yesterday which I was incredibly excited to get. He actually provided an image that represents it at in Brule, which I didn't think was possible. So, so I got really excited about that one because all I had was a, a map. So the calendar, I'm sorry for the new members, I should explain the, I had this idea a, a year or two ago of doing a, a calendar, a heritage calendar that celebrates the discovery of the travels of Etchin Brule and the discovery of Lake Superior. And 2022 is the 400th anniversary of that. So the calendar will run from September 2021 to December 2022. Um, and we had Nicole Curry is still um, helping me out and she's an incredible sounding board for some of the things that, that we're getting stuck on. Um, and uh, we've had tremendous help from the Shingwat group, Krista, and, and the museum, and Jeanette Cowan is my lead proofreader. So um, I was hoping to have a, a file by this morning, but I'm checking my email and I don't see it. So Bill will provide another draft of the calendar, and I will scan it and make it into a PDF file so that I can share it with all of you. And um, what we discovered also that if you do a 16 month calendar, that's 36 pages. So we ended up with two blank pages at the end. So we decided, Nicole and I, that the last page would be just a page of notes with lines that, you know, so the calendar owner can scribble appointments and whatever. And the page 35, we looked through, we had a whole bunch of pictures that we had to reject for the calendar because we didn't have enough pages, so we're, we decided on a George Caitlin painting that we like, so that will be great. So we're trying to, um, there's a lot of stuff we had to leave out of the calendar. So Nicole and I have asked Virginia whether there could be a website where perhaps images that we didn't have room for or that weren't good enough quality and the text that we've had to cut, <laughs> we've been cutting. You know, I asked Nicole, to, Nicole did three pages and you know, she did one on for the Old Stone House and she gives me like two and a half pages of text and I have to break it down to three three lines. And so we've been cutting, cut, 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 that's all we're doing. And, but it, it, I got really excited when I saw the first print copy that Bill brought to my house. So we're nearly there. But we won't be there for Heritage Week, I don't think. I think that, and as a, you know, we can't sell it anyway. So, you know, the stores that would sell it are closed. So we could, so I don't know. Oh, Virginia, I'm wondering whether to launch it whenever it's ready or to wait for another sure. date. Virginia, yeah. you Go ahead, Virginia. Um, one of the things, because we knew we were pretty tight on time, I had suggested to Jamie timing wise, which might be really nice, is July 3rd um, is National like Canada Historic Places Day. So launching it sometime around then might be nice. And if we're looking at, it, it's starting in September, Jamie, right? Mm -hmm. We can kind of launch it in advance leading into those days sometime in June and do a real another press release on um, Canada, or sorry, July 3rd is for National Historic Day. So I think we could start selling it sooner than that, but have a kind of real push during um, National Historic Day. Yeah, so Nicole and I also talked about with our two blank pages, should we take off September and just go from October to December? But we really like having a 16 month calendar because it includes, you know, the first semester of a school, mm -hmm. a school schedule. So we, we decided to continue with the number of pages that we had. But I will be looking for volunteer proofreaders when uh, very soon, you know, later this month <laughs> to get, but and you know, Jeanette Cohen will help, but Parks Canada has been very helpful as well. Um, you know, but one of the pages will be the canal. So the calendar is pre-clerk. 
Um, so basically, you know, from 1622 to about the building of the railway bridge and the um, canal. That's about the timeline of it. Okay, that's great news. Thanks yeah, for all the work. Well, shoot me next time I offer to do a calendar. <laughs> Put me out of my misery. <laughs> One thing do I you start. have any idea what it might spell for? Um, Virginia, did we think $10? Yeah, I think it depended on what the final pricing came in with. Um, so 10 to 12 is kind of the ballpark that we were looking at. Okay. I think Good the longer. cost per calendar was about $7.80 or something. And, and was it uh, was going to be like uh, two or 3,000 calendars printed? Ooh. Um, did we decide a print run of 500 to start? I think we, we set a value of 4,000 total. That, so okay. that's the amount that we can go up to in the creation of it. Okay. Sorry, $4,000 right. that we could spend. Yeah. That's right. Well, that's, that's great. 4, 000, that's not 4,000 <laughs> copies, but I, I think we thought of starting with 500 and then going from there. Okay, that's great. Any other comments or uh, questions? Oh, just a just a, a a caution, and I'm sure this is something that's already on Jamie and, and Nicole's radar too. Just um, we should probably avoid um, words like discovery, just because of um, the. Oh, I, so you already you already you're already on it. I see. Great, awesome. Well, no, actually, that that opens up another conversation. So I'm and, and I someone I had been told that a year or so ago, and um, I met <laughs> with Dean Sayers a couple times last winter during the snowstorm <coughs> and um, Dean had offered to give me an what he called an aboriginal lens to this calendar um, and I'm still hoping to have him look at it as a proofreader but I was unable to connect with him last fall when I was working on the, my, fin <coughs> my final versions of the text um, but yeah, so I, Jeanette is working on a project with Dean Sayers at Parks Canada, Jeanette Cowan, and she, she shared with me some texts that they had collaborated on. So I had her text as a guide, which was incredibly helpful because we are, there is a page on Bawading. Um, I think there's a page on Whitefish Island and there's a page on the pageant of St. Luzon. So, you know, yes, it's, it's very fraught with just saying the wrong thing <laughs> that could offend somebody. So I, I was, I hope I was sensitive to that, but I, that's the type of comment I'm looking for when, um, if you're interested, I can send you the text of sure. the, all of you. I can do that. And you can see what I've got for text, but, but the images are not there. And if you're really keen, I can send you a link to the, uh, Google Drive, and that's the link. That's the what the printer is working from. So that gives you an idea. I can do that. Both. I'll do both of that to the committee. That'd be great. Thanks, Jamie. I just want to thank you also for all the work that you put in too. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the goal is not to lose money producing this calendar. Okay, well, thanks for the great undertaking and the great job that's being done, Jamie. You're welcome. Okay, other subcommittee reports. Uh, item number two, the St. Mary's River Heritage Walk Committee, Virginia. Um, so prior to Christmas, uh, committee, the subcommittee members of the working group was looking at um, starting to write some of the narrative around each of the locations. So they've been working away at that. We're, I'm hoping to have a meeting to see where everybody's at uh, later this month uh, with that uh, subcommittee. So that will be taking place, hopefully a little bit more information. Um, the uh, capital request uh, to have the funds to develop the tour uh, didn't go through a council. So uh, right now we're just kind of in the research and preparation phase and we'll put forth another um, request for 2022. Hey, thank you, Virginia. Any other comments or questions for Virginia on that? Jamie, okay, I, moving. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jamie. Um, can I ask what your timeline is for the 
for the work that people are doing, like the the proposed heritage panels? Do you have a deadline for those? Um, well, I mean, I think we can work away at them over the course of the next few months. Uh, we don't have the funds to uh, necessarily create the panels or develop the tour. So um, it uh, hopefully in 2022 we'll receive the funding. Oh, awesome. Move forward with it. So we'll have time to work away at really nailing down those uh, panels and what's going to be included. And then the next step, once we have that, is um, I'm going to have... Um, once the weather warms up, go out and actually use, we have an iPad that we can track points and map them into the GIS. So I'll do another walk through the waterfront and actually uh, use our, whatever the app program is in order to actually get the points pinpointed in our GIS system for tracking. That sounds great. Okay, item number three and subcommittee reports are properties of interest. Um, so next step there is I'm working on, I've got a report partially drafted. Uh, we reached out to some other municipalities as well through the, our heritage network, just to see how different munici municipalities were handling doing batches of them and as well as how were they doing consultation right now um, at this point. So we got some feedback from those municipalities. So I would like to have the working group uh, pulled together. Uh, just so that they can review the draft report before we send it off uh, to council requesting that we enter the um, consultation phase or engagement phase with uh, the property owners that are being recommended. So I'm hoping okay. sometime in the next week or two um, we can have the properties of interest working group together. Okay, well, thank you, Virginia. I know that the group has worked very hard and long on uh, some of those uh, structures. Did anyone have any other comments? Okay, no comments. So uh, we're moving to item number nine on our agenda, correspondence and publications. Uh, I don't know whether you new members have received some of the Ontario bulletins that Virginia sends out or not yet, but they're, uh, they're quite informative. Okay, item number 10, uh, new business. Here we are at 10 Kensington Place for the window replacement. And uh, you have the information in your package. Uh, Virginia, did you want to add any more to that now? Um, I think uh, just a bit, a bit of an overview. In your package was the original, the, the designation report, as well as information on the restoration project that was completed uh, in 19, well, I think 1986, they had done a full restoration um, of that location. So it involved, um, a fair amount of work to the site. Uh, they did a number of um, removal of the exterior, some of the chimney that was there, masonry and carpentry repairs. There was new windows and doors added in. Uh, there was a rebuilding of the original veranda and then landscaping and fencing of the grounds was part of the scope of work that was done uh, at that time to do the restoration. So the windows were replaced um, at that time frame and the property owner at 10 Kensington is looking at um, unit two is looking at having to do some of the windows and doors again so in his package um, and the notes there are from um, park construction who's going to be leading the project uh, they have the sketches which um, outline um, the information that's there uh, I believe David Ellis is also working um, on this project as well. So you can see they uh, specified um, the color. So the red uh, grandest color is part of the painting and you can see in the window or the photos that were I emailed out today that that's consistent with the color of the exterior wood right now for the window trim. He also noted that the radius, the radius is at the top of the window or will be matching to what's existing there. So there's a very slight radius um, on some of the windows that needs to be matched up. Does anybody have any questions about the work? Uh, does anybody know what, uh... Is it, is it uh, pine nature of the wood or is it spruce or do you know? Uh, I, I, I don't know if it's in there. I haven't seen it. All. Yeah, it's wood. Um, 
I don't know if it says whether it's Facebook or Facebook. I can confirm. Um, we can get um, Kim Park on the line. Um, he said he'd be available for a call if there's any questions. Did the uh, replacement windows that are there now that were done in 83 or 87 or whatever the year was, uh, were they like uh, pine or spruce as Harvey says, do we know? Yeah, I'm just calling, if you give me two okay. seconds, I'm just gonna call and get sure. him on the line. Thank you. So it's just the one unit that's replacing uh, the windows? Uh, correct. Okay. Hi, Cam, it's Virginia. I'm just going to, we're in the committee meeting on Zoom. I'm just going to put you on speakerphone, okay? Hi, Kim, can you hear us? I can. Okay, perfect. Um, a couple of the committee members had some questions. Harvey, did you want to? Uh, well, I just wondered, uh, Kim, whether it was pine or spruce. Uh, do you know uh, type of wood that's being used? No, I don't. Uh, this is um, this this is the only company that we have found that is willing to produce these windows as per the specifications that we've provided, which you, I believe, Virginia has passed out um, their initial shop drawings. So. Uh, I would have to delve deeper into that to find out whether or not they're using uh, pine or spruce. Um, I would be quite surprised if it's spruce. Um, as a carpenter, the only spruce that I've ever been able to work with is Sitka. Um, not very common these days. Uh, the reason that spruce is not the species of choice is because it's very fibrous. And as a result, it does not machine or tool very well. It's uh, very difficult to well, plane. I agree with you. I understand that. Um, uh, yeah, and it probably would warp too after time. So I guess uh, maybe it wouldn't hurt even for your sake to check to see that it is uh, pine that they're using. Well, I, I don't need to know. And hang on. I, I, you know, I, I want to follow your instructions. But it, based on what you just said, I don't need to know. Um, so it's a moot point for me, unless you're going to instruct me, because you have a specific reason that we need to supply a certain species. Does that make my understanding in what you're saying, or did I misunderstand you? No, I, I just meant that if, you're, if pine is being used, then that's good. We know that it'll result in a good job and will last. Um, on the other hand, if they were going to use spruce, which is probably second grade, then it may, uh, might end up warping and causing a problem in the future. So. Yeah, yeah, no, at a $35,000 window order, we're not, uh, we're not getting a second grade, so. Well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not concerned about that at all. So what, I'm gonna say it again. If there's a requirement for the committee for me to meet a specific species, send that back to us in the written instruction and I'll follow up on that. Um, but I'm comfortable with where we are going with this supplier from a quality product point of view and this supplier's ability to meet the design requirements um, around this project. And further to that, uh, as part of the warranty of the product, the manufacturer will have to supply the frames painted. And I believe that that process will be us submitting the color to the committee for approval prior to us signing off on the order. Virginia, can you help me with that? Yeah, I think I thought that it said ran, red grandest was the bait was base price on all wood options. I thought that that was the coloring that they were using, uh, but we would, uh, it would be one to match the existing color that's there. 
that's my understanding. Yeah. Um, so, you know, at this point, we do not have an order with the company. Uh, we are being told that the build out schedule will be about 12 weeks. The owner, Kavanaugh, is quite concerned about this because we don't have an order in the system. Um, my review of the site conditions, I believe these windows are going to, in order to be done properly, must be changed out from the inside. So the interior fit up portion of the work and the completion of the work in order for them to be able to move in to their condo will be delayed as such by that process. Um, is that making sense? Yeah. The only other question I had, Kim, was just on the door, um, the configuration, and I know like the little sketches are a little bit different. Will the door have that same larger mullion in the front? So one of the variations is right now the door is open. Um, there's two little doors, correct? Yeah, let me speak to that. So I'm not sure whether in 1866 when the home was built originally that <clears throat> People were of smaller stature, or perhaps I don't know. Perhaps they didn't have the technology to build a window door configuration in uh, a large enough uh, sash in order to build a function. So, what the Kavanaugh's would have me pursuing, and what I'm trying to communicate to the committee, is that our intent would be to replicate the appearance of that assembly. So from a dimensional point of view, it would be as you see in the exterior photograph that Dennis has forwarded you. But from a function point of view, it would be one door. So if I'm speaking to your comment about the mullion, the, the proportions or dimension of the center mullion would have to be the same as the existing double operator did i explain that correctly yes yeah so you know the the, the the problem for i think the committee and the problem for the owner who is one of three this owner is prepared to make a substantial change and improvement to the building I know um, I'm the president of Algoma Condominium Corporation to St. Lawrence Towers, so I understand how this all works. I don't know that two of the three owners are willing to force a special assessment on the third owner, forcing her to upgrade her windows at this time. So the challenge is for Dennis and Nancy to go ahead, do the right thing, upgrade their windows, at this time meet the replacement design requirements for all the right reasons and hopefully leave a window of opportunity for the future replacement of the westerly windows that would match are there any questions You know, at the there end of the go. day, what I just spoke to of the three condominium units, the north unit, the windows were replaced, uh, I'm going to say a couple of years ago. I know that's vague, but that's the extent of my knowledge on that. Those old windows came from Sioux Mill. Um, we reached out to that company, and that company was not willing or able to produce the windows for this project. And the reason for that was stated that the North condominium has square top windows, whereas the East and West condominium, East, West and South windows have that one and three quarter inch radius top. And the company that did the North windows does not are not able to meet that manufacturing requirement. So this outfit that we're dealing with out of Quebec specialize in restoration of windows. Uh, 
perhaps I'm stepping out a little far when I make this assumption, but they have a huge market in Quebec, Montreal, Ottawa. So I think that's why we were able to find manufacturing requirements we needed with them. So. Okay, Kim, I want to thank you. It's uh, Dean. I'm the chair of the uh, uh, Municipal Heritage Committee, and uh, it's uh, you've answered a lot of questions, and uh, uh, you've done a lot of hard work trying to make this uh, fit into the heritage uh, requirements. Thanks for your help. Yeah, we. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited about this project. I I have a lot of affinity for uh, you know for these types of historical buildings. There's not a lot a lot of opportunity in this community. Um, other than maybe some of the national historic sites, but I, uh, I'm really looking forward to doing this project for, with Dennis and Nancy. And uh, like I said, I really appreciate um, the help of the committee. If we can uh, get a decision made on these windows and we can get this order started, because uh, you know Dennis and Nancy, <laughs> their daughter and son-in-law and some of the grandkids are moving in with them. <laughs> And I love them dearly, but I can see that there's going to be some pressure on me down the road to get this job finished. So, uh, like I say, if we can get a decision made and move this along, uh, I'd like to get an order in and uh, get some color samples to you for further approval. So, I'll leave it with you guys. Thanks, Thank Kim. You. Okay, Thank you. thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Yeah. So, any other comments or questions about uh, about this? And Virginia, how much, uh, just for the rest of the committee and the new committee members, uh, uh, could you explain to them uh, what, what's available to, uh, to the Kavanaugh's in terms of a, a, a grant or a, a partial payment from our committee? Um, yeah, so what uh, they, they have to fill it, finish out a little bit of the paperwork. There were some logistical challenges, but um, they we have $12,000 a year in our designated property grant program in which we can allocate to homeowners. And usually we, um, usually it's about $3,000 per property owner for the projects, uh, sometimes a little bit more depending on where we are in the year and how large a project that it is. Um, so that application will be coming forward. I think they're looking to, they did, um, as you mentioned, they tried other places to get quotes, but uh, it was very hard to um, have anybody meet um, the requirements of that. That radius across the top is definitely a challenge. And uh, we've done some research on that LaPage and they do custom special windows for these types of projects. So it's, um, you know, it's nice that they've been able to secure somebody that's gonna put that attention to detail. So then, Virginia, once uh, the, the final details are worked out, uh, then it will uh, come to our committee to uh, yeah. uh, pass a resolution to support this? Yeah, so we would have, they need a resolution, it's, and it's kind of, this is where it became a little bit tricky, just with timing. Um, Mr. Kavanaugh um, thought that he had to, once they ha we had given him a go-ahead that they could actually do windows, that he would put the application in. Um, they, so he hasn't finished the, he didn't get the paperwork finished in time for today's meeting, but they're hoping to order the windows because they're 12, like he said, pr probably at least 12 weeks in production. Uh, things are generally taking longer right now with the delays. Um, so the paperwork can be, will be submitted probably with the, in a, a couple days. So it's just a little bit late. Um, Alex is saying goodbye. He's got to jump back into the class for school. So. But um, yeah, so that's uh, kind of where it's at, but we do need a resolution allowing, if the com committee's comfortable, um, allowing them to move forward with placing the order and then they can get all the quotes to us for, with regards to the property grant. Okay, uh, so it's just speaking to the committee. Is everyone supportive of that? Uh, should we get uh, Virginia to write out her resolution? Well, just a question, uh, how much money are they going to be requesting uh, from the committee? Um, I had explained to Mr. Cavanaugh that usually the committee does about 3000 per property. We're at the very beginning of the year, and I think there may be another couple applications that are coming forward. Again, that's the committee's decision, but I kind of gave him 
the amount that is the cap generally depending on the size of the project this is a very large project um so so yeah so just wanted to i just told them the three thousand um was kind of the cap all right that's fine i just wondered yeah yeah any other questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Chair, I uh, yes. am supportive and um, would move a, a resolution to that fact as well. Thank you, Sean. And do we have a seconder? Uh, Harvey. Harvey, okay, thank you, Harvey. So Sean and Harvey? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so I've got resolved that the Municipal Heritage Committee approve the window and door replacement for 10 Kensington Terrace Unit 2 with um, windows and doors in the exact configuration and placement for mullions, joinery, and mullions and joinery, and that uh, the paint sample be brought to the committee at a later date for approval. Sounds good. Sorry, this is Kate. Um, just would that com just I don't know if this is nitpicking, but would that comment about joinery sort of um, interfere with the fact that Kim Park said that that those double doors would now be a single door that appeared like double doors? I don't know if it's if that's too much of a detail, but just to not. Well, um, we could put that in. Um, that. <laughs> I think that's helpful, Caitlin. It certainly yeah. sounds like a friendly amendment. Okay. Thanks. Can I also ask a question in general? Um, uh, is there anywhere where uh, property owners can look? It sounds like this window company is really rare, or at least, you know, it took a bit of digging to find. And I'm wondering if there is a list that the city, I know the city can't endorse certain companies, but in this case where you're looking for some very specialized work, I'm wondering if there's resources for local um, owners to look at so that they're more inspired to uh, go the route of, of, you know, honoring the heritage of whatever repairs they have to do. And um, or if that would be something that the committee could sort of put together as well. We have, so to, to your point, um, I sent out some documents I'd been working on. We had a little bit of downtime in the spring during COVID and I started to redo a number of the heritage resources that we have to expand our website. But right now, we're holding off putting any additional information on the website as we're moving through the AODA compliances. So, but um, I would love for you to, the committee had a chance to look at some of those documents before and I can send them out again. I would love for your feedback because yeah, you have a great lens that you can help add to that as well. So yeah, I'd appreciate that. Um, sure, yeah. yeah, so as we move through the, all of the AOD compliance stuff, I actually have a training session uh, in two weeks coming up uh, for the full day. Uh, so that's going to be, I may have to rejig some of the layouts depending on what I learn out of that session as well. So, but yeah, no, I think um, having links to some of those resources was, uh, I had those embedded in some of the frequently asked questions and documents. So yeah, that's a great point to add some okay. of the links to um, the windows. And so it is difficult, especially with our prop, where our location to try to um, tap into some of those resources. Yeah, for sure. Okay, Harvey thanks. Here. I'm sorry. Uh, it's Harvey here. I'm uh, suggesting it's a good idea and perhaps so uh, we should do it for masonry and uh, brickwork contractors as well. Yeah, the, um, they, uh, the ones that do it properly are difficult to come by. So. The, the uh, trick or something that I have to keep in mind is I have to, with being the municipality, um, not direct people into one to one contractor over another. So that becomes a little bit of a challenge. So I'd have to research all companies that can do custom heritage windows and include a list of all of them as opposed to only the one or two. So that becomes a bit of a, a challenge just to make sure that we're equitable and we're not um, promoting one over another. How far afield do you have to go to do that though? Um, <laughs> <laughs> All of Canada or, or Ontario or <laughs> well, in this case, case going to Quebec, so. Yeah, this, in this case, Lepage is out of Montreal. So, you know, we probably stick to Canadian resources. Yeah. Hey guys, um, I, I have a comment to make. Um, I also work and volunteer at the Sault Ste. Marie Museum and 
back in December before we got locked down, I was helping Will and he's actually in the process of on their third floor in their music gallery, um, replacing a window. Now we had to do the measurements and everything like that. And I don't know if he's found someone to do it yet or if he's even ordered the window, but he might have some insight on um, the supplier he's using. And he also might be able to answer the question of what type of wood they're um, going to have to use because he also mentioned that when they do come to replace it, they'll have to do it from the interior, like from the inside um, and everything. But he might have some insights. So, um, so I can actually speak to that. Um, with the museum being the city building, we actually uh, brought the window replacement and information to the committee um, a few months ago. Oh, cool! And the um, request for proposals um, went out. Uh, so actually we had a site visit yesterday, so it is, um, we did some research on the configuration of the windows, so they're a single hung window, and uh, they're going to be replaced with pine single hung windows, um, and painted to match the existing exterior color, and yeah, so that's, we're working through that process right now, um, uh, to see what comes back, um, uh, from those proposals that we put out. There windows we're doing are a little bit more straightforward they're a perfect square so there's no curved radius um, we do have one pane that's broken on the lower street level that we're looking at having to do um, that one would be just um, replacing the pane and trying to keep the existing woodwork and restore the existing woodwork uh, because it is one of those big arch windows uh, mm -hmm. that's down there so there's a number of them that we're looking at trying to do in-place restoration as well because they can be potentially restored whereas others are deteriorated so bad there's um we're going to have a challenge with trying to restore those ones that's great to hear though i haven't spoken with will in a couple of weeks so that's good i'm glad <laughs> yeah so it'll be good <laughs> okay well that was thank you for all those comments now uh virginia how's your resolution looking um <laughs> It's, it's uh, I had to scroll on to the back of pages. So it's I, in the section where it was uh, approved the replacement of the window and door to be replaced, to be changed from, um, I don't even know the proper, I have to look up the proper terminology. So uh, French door style into a single door, which will mimic um, the existing look. I really have a lot of, <laughs> I ran out of a lot of room on the page that I had left here. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, I just changed instead of replace the door and join you for like, I detailed out what Caitlin said. So I might get some um, specific wording from Caitlin and then just to make sure that it's detailed properly. Okay. We, pro we probably can't be sure that those are, that's the original, uh, wasn't that door put in where there was a window at one point? I read that in the uh, designation report. So. Yeah, it, there, there definitely was some modifications that were done and replacements that were done back when they did that full um, restoration project in the 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just wondering if we can call the question on the motion just because I have to yeah. run off to another meeting shortly, and uh, I don't want to lose quorum. Thanks, Sean. Okay, so Resolved that the Municipal Heritage Committee approve the window replacement and the door to be replaced from a French door to a single door, which will mimic the exact style and configuration, or um, sorry, exact style and appearance, and that further that the paint stamp will be brought to the committee for approval. Okay. Hey. So Sean and Hart, oh, you, uh, oh, sorry. I, that's right. You don't have the roll call sheet, Dean. Sorry. Uh, no. So Dean? Four. Mark? Four. Uh, Caitlin? Four. 
Uh, Sean? Four. And Harvey? Four. And Alex had to leave, and Alicia. Sorry about that, Gina. I was so busy writing and trying to fix and, my notes, I forgot and to Jamie. Jamie. Yeah, I'm voting four as well. Thank you, Dean. Okay. Okay. So moving to number 11 on our agenda is our next meeting date, which is one month from now, Wednesday, March 3rd at 12 noon. It will be a Zoom meeting. I can hardly wait till those end, but they're working well. Uh, item number 12, I would ask uh, someone to uh, uh, motion to adjourn. Uh, I, I will make the motion, Harvey. Okay, thank you, Harvey. Seconder? I'll second it, Caitlin. Okay, thanks, Caitlin. Okay. All right, everyone. Um, oh, before you Sorry. go, Dean. <laughs> Pardon? Dean? Are you four? Oh, I'm four, yes. Four. Caitlin? Four. Four. Uh, moved. Uh, Sean? Sean's okay. gone. Had, yeah, Sean had to zip. Harvey? Yes. Mover, Jamie? Yes. And Alicia? Four. All right. Okay, and all in favor? <laughs> all right. Thank you, everyone. Good Bye. meeting, new members. Thank you, very much, everyone. Okay, Thank Jamie, you. I'm looking you forward to about two Zoom meetings, except for the lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Jamie, everybody. I'm, Jamie, I'm looking forward to your. Uh, I'm looking forward, Jamie, to your uh, notes and things on the calendar. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Microphone. I think you're on mute, Jamie. Uh, sorry, I was just tweaking them during that last discussions about windows and wood and everything. And I'll in about 20 minutes, I'll have something for you. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.